Extensive trade existed between Kimi and Kush in the land of Yam, which included populations now in northeast Congo. A statuette of Asar dated to the 7th century BCE was found on the banks of the Lualaba River near the confluence of Kalmengongo. A statue inscribed with the cartouche of Thutmose III was found south of the Zambezi River. The Kuba, Luba, and Lunda populations descend from Congo in the Senegala lineage. Some other descendants also include Nima Nzima of Congo, Nsaku Lau of Mbata, Sham Mbul of Kuba, Kalala Ilunga of the Lunda, and Shibinda Ilunga of the Luba. EM2 subclades from the classical Happy River Valley among the Galanjan peoples of Central Africa validate these narratives. Now, when it comes to Southern Africa, these populations are the descendants of Mbedi as well as the Bakushi people who migrated south and produced the Zulu, Shona, and the Ndebele populations. They are part of the Sagara migrations. Nguni and Luzumana are the descendants of these lineages. Zulu Kamalandela is also a relative of Mbedi. Malunda, son of Mbedi and Princess Mbuya of the Razwi in Zimbabwe, produced the Lozi populations. The EM2 subclades from pre-dynastic Kimi, seen in modern Nguni populations, supports this migration history. The Somali are descendants of Sa Male, and they are part of the Sagara migration, as well as the Himyasum migration. According to the analysis and research of Antonor Furman, along with contemporary Africological linguists and historians, Somali is genetically related to Metrem and Kimi, or ancient Egyptian. And there are also many cultural commonalities between the two civilizations, as seen in some of the material cultures, from the bark and headrest, the Hango scepter, and the Jedo Shabuk whip. When it comes to the Swahili population, these are also rooted in the Sagara migration that penetrated deep into the south portion of the African continent into what is now Azania, and they are related to the Somali, Maasai, and Nguni people. Mfalme al-Muli, the pre-Kilwa Swahili ruler, would descend from this lineage, and this also refers to Pum in classical documents, which is corroborated by the Steli of Yabu, Nasut Paraha's visit to Queen Hatshepsut, and the extensive trade and commonalities. Swahili is genetically related to Metrim and Kimi and other Paleo-African languages, as can be seen in some of the body part expressions. There's numerous correspondences in architectural tectonics, and EM2 and EM35 subclades from classical Africa and Kimi and Kush that are found in modern Swahili populations firmly establishes these migratory origins and ancestral links. So again, it is very, very clear that from the available archaeological, oral, linguistic, genetic, and historical evidence that we can definitely affirm that the populations of contemporary Western Central Africa have roots in the Happy River Valley civilizations of Kimi and Kush. It has been confirmed beyond any reasonable doubt that this is a fact, and we should use this information to foster a deeper sense of unity and interrelatedness and collaboration among the populations of the African continent and the diaspora, because this is important when it comes to developing modern African societies that reflect the mission, the values, and the objectives of our ancestors to be the best versions of themselves and their societies that they could possibly be. That's why this is important, and we should completely resist any and all attempts by adversaries, by bad actors, to separate us using these artificial dividing lines. Because when we apply the pluridisciplinary approach to the evidence that we have at our disposal, it is clear that we are much more united than we are divided. And we should start to act like it for the better of Africa today and for the future generations.